Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is my review for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This review will have spoilers for the movie, so if you have not seen it, um, don't watch this review. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. So I made a video talking about the first reactions for this movie, and they were pretty much um, positive, but the Rotten Tomatoes score right now is sitting on like a 60, I think it was around 60% critic score, which is, you know, that's okay. Um, but, you know, that really didn't correspond with the, uh, re the reviews that I saw, the early reactions, which were mostly pretty positive. But um, anyway, so yeah, I got to check out the film today and um, I got to tell you, I really, really enjoyed it. I would definitely give it a fresh review. Now, I do have problems with it, which I will talk about, but um, first of all, I am a major like Hunger Games fan. I love those first four movies so, so much. They are just terrific, especially Catching Fire is just amazing. I love them so much. I rewatched them like last month and yeah, truly, truly great films. I love them. And so I'm a massive fan, obviously, so I was very excited for this film. And um, going into this, I was, you know, excited to see what's going on. So, but yeah, overall, I would say I did really enjoy it. I, I really did have a good time. The, I do have some problems with it. I think I'll just get right out with it. I thought it's like split up into three parts, right? There's, um, I think it's like chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. I thought chapters one and two were great. Chapter three really, I think, weighs down the movie for me. And it really takes a turn in chapter three. Like there's a major turn. Like after, um chapter two was ending i thought like that was the end of the movie because i didn't actually know how long the movie was going to be like or i'd forgotten or something but i did not expect it to be as long as it was i think it's like two hours and 48 minutes or something which is very very long i thought the movie was ending at the end of chapter two but no there was still like a whole another third of the movie to go it was only just the end of the second act but um i think that third act really does drag it down while i thought some parts of it were good um i thought others were just you know rushed and you know, some of it dragged and the story was uh, was not that interesting, I guess. It just it really took a turn from all the stuff that I was loving in the first two chapters, you know. Um, but I'll start with the good before I really get into the bad. So, first of all, I want to say Tom Blythe is great as Coriolanus Snow. I mean, that's that's that everyone's saying that in their reactions, and that is true. He is the star of the film, which I was surprised by because I going into it, I thought that Rachel Zegler was the star, like the actual main top build protagonist, but no. He is the top build um, actor. He is the the actor in the movie. You know, he's the protagonist, and she is like a supporting character. You know, she's a second lead, I guess. But yeah, he was great. I thought he was terrific. I thought Viola Davis was amazing. She had such a great villainous character. I loved her costumes. She looked so good. But Viola Davis is great in everything, right? So I expected it. But she really made a character out of this character. You know, it was she was very entertaining to watch. Um, also Jason Schwartzman was great as Caesar Flickerman's father, like the, the TV host guy of The Hunger Games. And yeah, Peter Dinklage, I thought he was okay. I thought, um, you know, for what he was, what he did, which is he had a relatively small role. He's the guy who, well, at, at first we think invented the Hunger Games, right? But we soon learned that he only thought up of it, thought it up as like a joke when he was drunk. And Coriolanus' father took it seriously and actually made the games into what they are. And so, um, yeah, he. But I thought he was okay up until the end. His last scene was great. I thought he did a really good job there. But um, Rachel Zegler, I thought. I don't know, I was really conflicted, right? Her, her accent definitely threw me off as soon as um, it, as soon as I heard it, because I didn't actually know she was going to have an accent in the film, because I hadn't read the book or anything. Um, her accent really threw me off, but I soon got used to it. I thought she was, I was in, like, I was enjoying her character up until part three. I thought part three, I sort of just, I feel like they didn't really know what to do with her and things, you know, I understand there's a book to go off, but I just, I don't know, her character kind of dwindled out for me in um part three but i thought the stuff with her in the um arena was you know was uh engaging but um i don't know how well of a fit she is for the hunger games universe i don't i'm, I'm not sure but again nevertheless she was she was good for the um first two acts she was she was fine um but the third act she really just dwindled out for me i guess but um also the actor who plays sir janus he did a good job but i thought that character was so annoying and just caused problems for everyone especially in the third act i mean you know, he was making some very, 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 very stupid decisions and he did not seem to learn because he continued to do them. And he, he got, you know, he, he, he got the consequences for them. You know, I mean, in that scene where, I'll just skip to the end really quick. In that scene where, um, where, uh, what's his name, Coriolanus, um, goes around back to see what he's doing. Like when they're in the bar and Lucy's singing and he sees him like talking to the, the, 
you know, like civilians of the district and then there's the guns and he's like oh i didn't know there'd be guns i didn't know and he's like panicking and i'm like what did you think was gonna happen you know um Coriolanus warned you about this this is the consequences of your inactions that character was annoying and i honestly i felt nothing when he was hung fuck that guy <laughs> i'm sorry that's a bit rough but but still you know he was an annoying character and he really he yeah he made the same mistake over and over again you'd think he would learn after going into the arena and nearly dying but no he doesn't learn um but yeah i thought again Coriolanus was so so great and at the start of it, I was like, how on earth does this guy turn into snow? Because he was just so damn likable. By the end of it, you can definitely tell how he turns into it. And I, I did like the end, like the very much, the very ending when he's like standing in front of the statue and looking up at it. It's like, okay, this guy's snow. And when he's talking to um, Peter Dinklage's character, who I'm forgetting the name of. But um, yeah, he was definitely, he was definitely very charming though in the first two acts. He, he was great and I was really rooting for him. But you know, they did a great job at seeing how he turns into snow. Um... So the Hunger Games part of it only actually takes up like an hour of the movie. It's only like an hour and the other hour and a half are spent before and after. My first, my favorite parts are definitely the first two acts. I, I just, because I love being in that part of the universe where it's like um, the capital and like the marketing aspect of it and how the Hunger Games is like a TV show. Because, you know, bef this is like, this is the games, the 10th annual Hunger Games, when it actually becomes about like ratings and tv and like making it a spectacle and making it entertaining because of Coriolanus he's the one who made it have all like that marketing you know aspect to it where like they get mentors and they're filmed all the time and they try to make people like them to get gifts sent in the arena he really he is the guy who makes it like it is in the 75th annual hunger games before that it was just chuck all these kids into an arena a pretty much bare arena by the way the arena is just like a round room like that's it and um, they, they like chuck all these kids into an arena and just make them fight to the death and it doesn't last very long. But, um, you know, contrasting that with what it is like in the future in the 75th annual Hunger Games, it's a very elaborate like forest arena or like a desert tropical, not trop not desert, but like a tropical arena. And there are like, you know, things implemented in the games to make it more entertaining and they go on the talk shows and they try to get people to root for them and try to get sponsors and things like that. Snow is the one who makes it like that, you know, he's the one who sort of transforms the games into what it is now, which I thought was really cool and I didn't know about. Um, there was definitely some callbacks to the first original movies that I loved, like I absolutely loved, towards the start of the movie when um, Snow was walking through Pan Am and you hear that original Hunger Games music, it really brought me back into this universe and I had like goosebumps swelled throughout my body, like it was crazy, I, that theme is just so amazing. And I love it so much. So that moment was really, really great when he was walking through Pan Am and you hear the music. It was fantastic. And also, when um, uh, Lucy Gray has the like flower, someone gives her the flower, and she's looking at it. It's like it's just like a potato flower or something. She calls it like some people call it a potato flower, but I like Katniss better. And you hear Katniss's theme play like softly. Oh, it was just it really brought me back to it. And I only rewatched the movies a month ago. It makes me want to go watch them again because they are truly like great films they're the best dystopian films you know they are so great but i thought this did a good job of bringing us back into the universe in the first two acts at least i just thought the third act was the storyline was a bit was like boring it lost all the magic that the hunger games usually has i mean the movies do so well at balancing us with the district and like the the appeal of the capital you know the visuals of the capital that's what the is so great about the hunger games but you know that third act really just we are deep in the districts and it's all gl like it's glum and it's moody and yeah. Um, also, the ending was kind of off to me how she like tries to kill him because I, I think the reason is because she found out that he betrayed um, Sir Janus and recorded that um, the treat the, of him talking about how he's going to commit treason. I think that's how and she found out about that and she's like she was a little bit skeptical obviously when he said oh three is enough people to kill for me and then she said three I thought we only killed two. Um, so she was obviously catching on to him, but yeah, she tries to kill him. Like, I really didn't expect that. I thought what was going to happen was when they got, when they went to, I thought she was going to die. I thought someone was going to kill her. Like, either in the games or they were, when they saw those people with the guns before he killed the mayor's daughter, you know, in that room where Sir Janus was freaking out. I thought she was accidentally going to get shot. And, you know, that could be a reason why he, like, hates the districts, you know? But, um, no. So, yeah, Lucy Gray turns on him and, you know, she tries to poison him with the snake which I do like the, the the snakes throughout this film were done very well, very creatively and very cool ways to use them. I thought the stuff with the sweat was really cool. That moment when um, 
his classmate tries to take credit for the proposal and then he she makes him makes her stick her hand uh, Viola Davis's character makes her stick her hand in the tank of snakes to retrieve the proposal because if they you know smell your sweat and stuff they're not going to attack you but it's obviously not her sweat because she didn't write it and she gets bitten and presumably dies but um yeah I thought that was really cool the snakes were used so well also seeing an earlier version of the Jabber Jays was cool and seeing how they're brought into the plot was cool even though I thought that again third act story was just you know it really did take a turn you know the film is oh you know, I wish it stuck the landing a little bit better, you know? While I did like the last, like, I'd say five minutes, just that last whole third act really was just kind of dragging on for me. And, yeah. But, um, I mean, I was really believing their romance in the first two um, acts, you know, when he was bringing her food in the cage. And I was really believing it. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, surely she has to die. That must be the reason why he hates everything. But, no, she tries to kill him because she learns of what he's done. And he's, you know just like all the other capital um, mutts, I guess, is a word. Um, in, the arena stuff was pretty cool. I liked seeing... Um, she, uh, right, look, I thought Rachel Zegler was good in the arena. I thought she... Obviously, she was she was fun to she was fun to watch, you know, when she was in that arena. And it was cool to see how like, all the games are the same. You know, there's just, there's the people who, who team up and there's the people who just hide the whole time. And, you know, it's all of the games are the same. But, um... Like in a good way. I mean, like there's a there's a cool through line with that. How it's all like similar. People, it's human nature and stuff like that to find allies and things. But yeah, I thought there were also um, really creative ways in which she used the rat poison. I thought that tension with the water bottle was so well done, and how the poor girl with like tuberculosis was the one who drank it. And I was like, oh my god. Like, uh, I mean, you know, she already has one foot in the coffin. Why would she do that? But yeah, um, I thought that was done really well. Um, I thought we sort of started to see a little bit of um, Snow's sort of darker side seep in throughout the film, which I thought was cool. You know, the moment where he beats that guy's face in with the brick. I mean, he had to, but he didn't have to hit him like three times after he was already down. But yeah, um, the film also has a lot of singing, which sometimes it really, it really annoyed me. Like when it, when it's like a performance and she's like Lucy Gray's got the got the guitar and she's on stage. I didn't mind that, but when she got when she was in the reaping. And she just starts singing. Like, I don't think that's what people would do. I understand she's a performer and she's, you know, a singer. But I think that's a very traumatic uh, experience. Like, you're being sent to your death, basically. And you're just going to... You're going to sing. I suppose that could be... I suppose that could be, like, a... um, Sort of an older version of the three fingers that they do. Like, in Rebellion to the Capitol. Um, that's cool. I guess, you know, if you think about it like that, I guess that could be cool. Also, I like the um, callback to the Hanging Tree song. Which is used very heavily, again, in the third chapter. Um... I like the older rendition of it. I think it sounds good. Obviously, I think the newer version sounds better. It's more catchy, you know, but I thought the older rendition was good. And also, I saw something on Twitter saying the reason they sound so different is because obviously being passed down through generations, it would um, change a lot, right? You know, through different people's voices and perspectives and things like that. But yeah, overall, I thought the film was really good. I thought there were some really cool um, character moments with Snow and Lucy Gray in the first two chapters. I thought the Hunger Games how the whole Hunger Games aspect was in the arena was awesome. I thought um, Viola Davis was great. I thought Peter Dinklage was good, but Tom Blythe really stole the show. Also, Hunter Schaefer, she was in this. She was good. There wasn't a lot of her, though, as Tigress, but I would have liked to see a bit more, but she was good for what she had. Really cool action, really cool visuals, by the way. I love the retro sort of radio analog type of visuals that they have for the technology in the capital. It's a really cool way of blending the future and the past together. So I really love that. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. Go check it out. It's a good time. The ending does drag a bit. And the ending, the third third chapter story was not it for me. But overall, the first two chapters were so good. I really enjoyed it. So that's it for my review of The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Did you enjoy the movie? Have you seen it? Are you going to watch it? Let me know. Also, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.